Hello everybody, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Let's Play Resident Evil 7. This is episode 15. Last time we, as Ethan, made our way through the assault mines, found out that Lucas is not actually controlled by Evelyn, he's just an asshole, and we got the neurotoxin that should be able to kill Evelyn. So now let's find out what's on the other side of this door. Hmm. Could it be that this connects into the Baker estate through the basement? I mean, that would make sense. Okay, I was about to press control. I almost did it, and then I stopped and thought about it. See, we're... That would explain how Lucas easily got to the laboratory and chucked Mia into the into the cell from here. Okay, can't go that way. So does that mean Grandma is also an E-series? Are we going to inject Grandma to test out our neurotoxin? Here's where Mia attacked us the first time. She came crawling up the stairs. Gee, I wonder if the phone works this time. So we're not in the main house, we're in the guest house right now. What do you want? Oh no, we've been trapped in a haze of memory. Let me look in this memory bathroom. This is your fault. Why am I seeing this? Because you're infected, stupid. It's not like we just read all of this, but again, I don't think there's ever been... Oh, well, maybe that's too broad a statement, but I don't think I've really played a lot of games where characters react to notes you read in the world, because there's no guarantee you'll read them. And if the player doesn't know the information, then the character can't. I wonder if we can get the... The coin we missed. But that would require us to watch the VHS to get the lockpick and open the thing, and that's a whole thing. Ethan, it's okay. It's okay, it's me. I know you didn't mean to hurt me. Kill him, Mommy. Let me guess. You shouldn't have done that! This isn't a memory. It fucking hurts! Does it want to be my daddy? Then he can die. Or is this... Now it's Mommy's turn to kill you! Is this, uh... Ethan seeing... I guess what Mia would have been seeing when that happens? You know, she's whispering kill him in her, in her ear at the time. Are we gonna have to fight Mia again? Like in the attic? Because <laughs> if we were infected, I guess that would make a little bit more sense why we saw, like, Jack and Marguerite. And Zoe, who's not dead, but I guess is, you know, still infected, so. It makes sense why she was there and why Lucas was not, because he's not part of... Ethan, help me! I don't know, are you up here? Somewhere?
Nope, I guess she's not up here, so I'm hearing her through the floor. We've had some good times, me and Mia. Me and me. This way. This is not a real door. <clears throat> Things are getting weirder and also foggier. I mean, one of these is going to be real me, all right? Get away! Mm. Gonna... No, no, no. gonna get you, you little shit. I was holding guard. So we can't actually die in this. I thought maybe we couldn't because it was like a weird flashback. But we do have health and we are taking damage. Tricky little shit. So. Let me guess. Grandma's Evelyn all along. Right there, wicked witch. You know, for a second there, I thought Evelyn actually tricked us and made us waste our neurotoxin. But instead, we have turned her into her mold form. Which I am not adequately prepared for. Oh, we're gonna get crushed. I can't. I can't shoot. It, like, won't let me shoot her tentacles. bit Uroboros on us. I can't get up or anything, so I just have to keep shooting her. I 
It's not looking so hot for us, Ethan, old buddy. Thank you, helicopter. So here's our real Resident Evil Magnum. I guess this is that Wesker gun. Yeah, I'm sure this is going to end well for us. They're going to put us in the Nemesis program. I'm Redfield. Glad we found you. So this is supposed to be Chris, right? You know, based on the this DLC. Is the other secret going to be that Ethan also works for Evil Corporation? Ethan? We found her wandering around the swamp. You made it. I'm glad. Did I? And then she just vomits up a mushroom. Yep, it's an umbrella chopper. They say that when one door closes, another opens. Well, a door closed tonight. A bunch of them. And what a long night. Especially when Jack was chasing us. But not just for me. Me and I weren't the only victims here. So were the bakers. There was that cop too. It was that thing, Evelyn, who made them that way. But now Evelyn's dead. And these guys are here to clean up the mess. I had just come to terms with losing Mia. And now she's back and wants to start over. Some weird spacing in the subtitles. Us. Maybe this is where the next door opens. And title card. Well, that was a bit of a happy ending considering Umbrella Corp just picked us up. And it's probably going to stick us in the lab. Is this, is this going to be Lucas? Go tell Aunt Rose. Or is this going to be Zoe? Go tell Aunt Rose. Oh, never mind. It's just the credits. Go tell so yeah, like, did, did Lucas just kind of fuck off? Like, well, I can't deal with this anymore. I'm just gonna, you know, cut my losses and run. And I mean, if Mia's okay, then Zoe should have been okay too. Is this is this Evelyn's song? They locked me up and took my soul. I mean, that was a... I didn't even think we were going to get to the ending just yet. I thought there would have been at least one more episode. But I guess they did kind of tie up some of this stuff, like, you know, Grandma, who was actually Evelyn all along. Which is not the most surprising twist, especially once they mentioned that, you know, she was degenerating and getting all old.
Now, the fact that it was Umbrella that came in at the end doesn't explain why Umbrella exists. Because, I mean, obviously, Umbrella was shut down after the U.S. government had to intervene and blow up Raccoon City. And then Resident Evil 6 had Neo Umbrella, which was just, I guess, just a couple people using the, the old name, you know. But even that kind of fell apart after the, like, two people that were actually shown working for Neo Umbrella that were, you know, infected with Las Plagas. So, when did Umbrella get completely refounded? And then Chris Redfield joined. Also, I'm wondering if that uh, him taking the helmet off at the end there was different originally. Because one thing that was kind of spoiled for me is that there was a character named Redfield at the end, but people made it sound like you never saw his face, he just introduces himself as Redfield. So I'm wondering if that little thing of him taking the helmet off was something they patched in when they announced the Chris Redfield DLC. Because there is going to be DLC where you play as Chris Redfield working for Umbrella, you know, taking place presumably before or after this game, or during, you know. But, yeah. That's one thing they'll have to answer is, why is there an Umbrella? I'm sure there are people who play this game who don't give a shit about that, because, you know, a lot of people are like, Hey, Resident Evil 7's good, because it has nothing to do with the other games. And, you know, apparently that's what made Resident Evil 5 bad more than anything else, was that, oh, they brought all these stupid Resident Evil plots back. But, you know... I'm somebody who enjoyed those stupid Resident Evil plots. It's the same thing as, like, you know, people who like Metal Gear. Metal Gear's got a bunch of stupid plots that are still not that complicated when you actually think about them. And Resident Evil's the same way. Anyhow, I'm, I'm totally fine with there being a Chris Redfield DLC if that's what they want to do. I'm not as against this game, you know, being unrelated as I was when I first went into it, because I, I was a little, you know not going to give it a fair shake when they first announced it, and I was like, oh god, they're making a first-person Outlast knockoff with some Resident Evil themes, but no actual connection. And, you know, it does connect back in here. People were definitely right when they said that stuff's all kind of back-ended, though. But overall, I guess I should say that I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I enjoyed the first half where it was more horror oriented and you know you had to worry more about getting away from unkillable enemies like Jack than the later half where it was just a, a normal kind of shooter. Why does Chris Redfield have five different things listed? But, that said, I am hoping they don't just decide, okay, Resident Evil 7 did, you know, did well, let's make every single Resident Evil thing a first-person game now. I mean, that shouldn't be the case if the Resident Evil 2 remake actually comes out, because they were supposed to announce something about that in February, and they never did. Or maybe it was January. But again, there's been no mention of it for a while, so that's a little concerning. Uh, Resident Evil... On the, the film side of things, Resident Evil... Is it Vengeance? Something that starts with a V, I think. It doesn't start with a D like the other two, but... I don't know, if you never watch those CG movies but actually enjoy Resident Evil, they're pretty fun. And, you know, way better, obviously, than the live-action stuff because they are directly tied into the games. Also, if you like Leon, he's in all three of them, so there is that. And yeah, there's one of those coming out this uh, this year, which also features the return of Rebecca Chambers, who is apparently now a professor. So that'll be interesting. I do hope we get we get that Resident Evil 2 remake, and hopefully this year. But there's also that Resident Evil 1.5, uh, you know, the fan remake of the original concept for Resident Evil 2, which is apparently still, you know, still going along. Might come out this year. Probably not, but we might at least get another demo this year, which would be nice. Because I am curious to see, essentially, a mostly fan-created Resident Evil using just, you know, concept from kind of the early stuff that they showed off for Resident Evil 2 before it was cancelled and then remade. 
Kind of like an AM2R, but with Resident Evil. Obviously, AM2R was just a remake of an existing game, whereas this is a remake of a prototype of an existing game. But yeah, I, I look forward to seeing more Resident Evil stuff this year. Uh, I hope we don't get another Revelations game anytime soon, because the second one was fucking terrible. I know some people seem to like it and think it was also a return to form, and I'm not really sure why, because there's a lot of garbage design in that game. A lot of things that were just not enjoyable to play through. Now, that said, my opinion on Revelations 2 is basically entirely campaign-based. The raid mode is fine. You know, they expanded raid mode out a lot more, and it's a lot of fun. And there are people who bought it just so they could play all this new raid mode. But the campaign side of things is kind of terrible. A lot of credits here. I'm running out of things to talk about. Uh, future LPs. I mean, I'm going to try to do the DLC for this game now. I know a lot of that doesn't really tie into the the main game. A lot of it's kind of like standalone modes and stuff, but it'll be cool to check that stuff out. And there is that Chris Redfield DLC, which I believe comes out next month. It might be this month, actually. It might be the end of this month. But, you know, obviously we'll check out that, because it's more story content. And it's free. It's not even part of the season pass. But as for new LPs, I've got a few things tossing around. Of course, I said that I don't want to start a new proper LP until I've got my whole new microphone setup going. Or I've got the boom installed and everything. And I have the microphone, and I don't have the boom, so... I want to kind of wait on that stuff until I get that stuff set up. So there is one game I might do in the interim. Or at least start in the interim. Which is a, a weird, bad, single-player spin-off or supposedly bad, single-player spin-off of a multiplayer otherwise series. I'm sure some of you will know what I'm talking about. There are zombies involved. That should pretty much narrow it down, but if not, it might be a surprise. And I don't know if I'll do that just yet, but I'm thinking about it. There's also another game that I've been looking to get back to, a chronological sequel and released prequel to... That's a really, really weird way to say it. It is a game that came out before another game in this series I did, but that takes place chronologically after that other one that I've been meaning to do for quite a while. You know, going back to a familiar irradiated hellhole. But yeah, as usual, there's always a, a lot of games on the hopper kind of getting tossed around. Should I do this now? Should I wait on it? Should I work on it first? Uh, I still have to do Resident Evil Remake, which is one that I've been planning to do for a while. But again, I might wait on that one. Uh, there's some short games I want to do. Which, not to give anything away, but uh, Abzu is definitely on that list for a short game. But again, that's the kind of game where I think having a better mic would definitely benefit the LP overall. And yeah. So there's a lot of stuff for me to look forward to doing at some point this year. I just don't know kind of what order I'm going to do in it do it in or when. Plus, there's always more stuff coming out, more stuff that I might want to cover. Uh, I'm just trying to think if there's any big releases in the next couple of months that I might actually want to possibly LP. Obviously, there are two RPGs coming out this month, both of which I'm going to get. Uh, Near Automata, which is already out for the PS4, but it's not out for PC until the 17th, as well as Mass Effect Andromeda, which, you know, some people are going to roll their eyes through their fucking skull when I say that, but... I'm definitely going to play it, even if it turns out to not be as great as it should be. Maybe part of that's because I never played any of Dragon Age, so I didn't have the disappointment of Inquisition. Man, look at all these licenses. I don't even know what that one on the left is. And of course, there's always a huge backlog of first impressions type videos of games that I mean to take a look at and then don't actually play myself because I'm like, oh, I'll wait until I've actually done a video before I start playing it myself, and they never do. So there's certainly no shortage of potential content. The typefaces included herein are solely developed by Dynacomware. I wonder if that includes the Resident Evil logo font. Yeah, I really didn't think this was going to end this soon. The game, not the credits. Uh, 
kind of thought that, uh, oh, they're, they're still going. Can we maybe just skip these? I can't tell if we're coming to the end. I don't want to skip them, because sometimes skipping the credits will skip ending stuff. So this is all, this is all about Evelyn, or the E-Series. Is this the, the marketing pitch for the E-Series that we're looking at? There's something there about if injections were missed. Okay, here's our ending. Uh, okay. Just the sound of a phone ringing. Mr. Everywhere is destroyed, 17 out of 20. Antique coins, 17 out of 18. So yeah, the only coin I missed was the one at the start. Apparently I missed two files. Open the item box 75 times. Uh, there's an achievement for only beating the game and opening the item box like three times, I think it is. Stabilizers, steroids. I wonder if there's only two stabilizers in the game. Yeah, there's that pistol we got at the end. So that's one other kind of minor thing that was spoiled. I'm guessing it's called the Albert O1R because it looks a lot like Wesker's custom Samurai Edge. The Secret of Defense. Yep, that's just an item that makes us more resilient. Yeah, there we go. I'm glad there's an ad for that at the end of the game. An ad for a free DLC. And that's it. What was what was up with the, the phone ringing? Was I supposed to press something there to answer it? I hope that wasn't the case. Anyhow, that'll do it for Resident Evil 7 for now. Uh, I guess all of the the DLC stuff, if I do it, is going to be filed under, you know, bonus content. So, this will be the last proper episode. Also, just noticed that there's Dulvi beer up there from, you know, the town we were in, which has a fucking gator on it, but we didn't see a single gator, not even, not even like an incidental uninfected gator, just not at all, which is a shame. Anyhow, I've been Shadefire, this is Resident Evil 7, and maybe we'll check out some of the uh, banned footage stuff next time. Until then, you folks all take care.